This is a computer power supply tester. It tests voltages on ATX, BTX, and ITX power supplies. And here is an EVGA ATX 600 watt power supply. I'm going to test this out using this tester. And I'm also going to check it out using this voltmeter that's coming up on Thrifty AV. You can use a voltmeter to check a computer power supply, but to check all of the different pins requires getting a lot of different readings. This power supply tester will do that all at once. So let's start by hooking up this power supply to this tester. This thing doesn't have any brand name on it. It's simply Power Supply Tester 4. It comes in this uh, kind of stapled bubble thing. It does come with this little instruction booklet. It's short and sweet. Does 20 pin ATX, 24 pin ATX. Does floppy 4 pin, PCIe 6 pin, 4 pin, and 8 pin and SATA connections. Displays the voltages on the LCD screen. The EVGA power supply is a semi-modular design with the 20 plus four uh, hardwired in here and the four plus four CPU power also hardwired in here. To test out the VGA and SATA, I'm gonna to have to plug some pigtails in here but I want to test the 20 plus 4 plus the CPU power first. So to do that, I'm going to plug the 20 in right there, and then the plus 4 in right there. And on the other side, I'm going to plug in those four and these four, and that'll test the CPU power supply and I'm going to turn this power supply on. Now this power supply tester uh, powers from the power supply so if you don't get any kind of display when you power up your power supply well that means your power supply or this tester is not functioning properly. There are no batteries associated with this device. So let's take a look. Uh, the minus 12 volts shows 12. The plus 12 volts 2 shows 12.1. That is within spec. Uh, 5 VSB shows 5.1. Uh, this PG, uh, that is the amount of time it takes for the power supply to get a uh, good uh, voltage. And that was 330 milliseconds. That's less than 500. That's good. Plus 5 volts shows 5, plus 12 volts 1 shows 12.1, and plus 3.3 .3 volts shows 3.3. .3. Now I can also test out Molex over here, uh, Floppy over here, and 6-pin connections over here. So let's try some of those out. Okay, I'm now going to hook up a 6-pin GPU and power this up. And I'm getting 12.1 volts at the plus 12 V2 spot right here. And that is what is, uh, that's what's coming out of this 6 pin right here. So this tests out good. Now when I power this back down, something interesting happens. And it'll happen here in a couple of seconds. Uh, for some reason, it does that a few seconds after you power it down. Not sure why, maybe someone can tell me why in the comment section. I've plugged two more pigtails into this semi-modular power supply. This peripheral pigtail will let me test Molex and floppy connections. And this SATA will let me test SATA power connections. To test SATA, you plug into this side, Molex over here, and floppy over here. I'm going to start with SATA. Okay, I've plugged in the SATA and I am powering up the power supply. SATA has rails for plus 12 volts, plus 3.3 volts, and plus 5 volts. All three of these are lit up, 
So the SATA power is working fine. I'm now going to switch over to Molex. All right, with Molex, I got plus 12 volts and plus 5 volts. That's what I was expecting. There should not be any plus 3.3 .3 volts on the Molex. Now let's try the floppy power. When you're plugging in floppy, make sure that you put the, uh, the clip side down like that. And then power this up. And I'm getting plus 12 volts and plus 5 volts, which is what I was expecting for a floppy power connector. Disclaimer, the stuff you're about to watch me do is not for novices. You do this stuff wrong, you can damage your power supply or your test equipment or yourself. To test the 24 pin connection with a voltmeter, it's a little bit more involved. In the old days, these used to be color coded, but these days they generally are not. So you need a pin out diagram to know how to do this. Uh, you need to uh, bridge power supply on with one of the grounds. I'm going to pick the ground right next to it. It's a good idea to disconnect the power supply when you're doing this. And I'm going to use a paper clip. And I'm going to bridge from this pin 4 here to the ground right next to it. And this will allow me to turn on the power supply. And you notice the fan spun up when I had this bridged. Okay, now I can test out the rest of the pinouts one at a time. Okay, to test using a voltmeter, I'm going to hold this ground against one of the grounds. And it, it these probes will not fit in these pins. So I'm going to have to hold that down. Now right here I am going to expect uh, plus 3.3 .3 volts. And I got it. The next one I'm going to test should be minus 12 volts. And it says minus 11.59. Uh, this one here should be plus 3.3. .3. Uh, this one here should be another plus 3.3. .3. The next one should be a ground show, so I should get zero essentially. This pin should be plus 5, and that's what I got. And basically, you go through this whole routine for all these pins and these pins to see if all the voltages are correct. And then you do the same thing for your uh, GPU, and you do the same thing for your CPU power, and it takes a while. It's rather cumbersome to check all the pins to make sure all the voltages are correct when you can use this one device that will test pretty much the whole thing at once. Now you have to test out the GPU separate from the CPU and you have to test out the floppy separate from the Molex separate from the SATA but it's pretty easy to plug and unplug this stuff and just check out the readout on this one tester. Compared to testing with a voltmeter where you have to check each individual pin, testing with this power supply tester is a breeze. You just plug in and look and it warns you if something's not right. Uh, also for the uh, 24 pin and the uh, GPU and CPU it will give you exact voltages. Some of these testers just have dummy lights. Now this only has the dummy lights for uh, Molex and SATA and uh, Floppy. Uh, it would be nice if I got exact voltages on those as well. All right, what this does not do. This uh, power supply is rated at 600 watts. This will not tell me if it is truly a 600 watt power supply. It does not do any type of stress testing. Also, it's rated at 80% plus bronze. This will not test efficiency of a power supply. There is a link to this device in my description. It is an Amazon affiliate link, so 
I earn a small commission at no additional expense to the buyer. If you enjoy this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.